Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, along with my good friend Seth V. And we're here to talk about the most ergonomic folding knives that you can get your hands on right now. Let's check them out. So I think this is going to be uh, it's a bit of an interesting topic because it kind of sprang from a disagreement you and I had, or maybe disagreement might be too strong a word, but a, a it was an argument. <laughs> I was gonna say more a, di a divergent viewpoint. Yeah. Um, when discussing the word ergonomic, uh, talking about what are the most ergonomic folders, you and I went in kind of completely different directions, I think. And part of that is because I think the word ergonomic is one of the most one of the, the most least understood terms out there. And I'm not I'm not even claiming to be an ultimate expert on it either, because. I think, I think it's often misused and overused mm -hmm. in you know, a broad spectrum of things, not just knives. Uh, and I think you and I both have some definitions here yeah. that cool will, will kind of help illustrate the point. Um, so if you would read ergon the definition of ergonomic. Ergonomic uh, from the OED is relating to or designed for efficiency and comfort in the workplace. Efficiency and comfort in the workplace. Yeah. So comfort's in there, and that's where I kind of went. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a comfortable folding knife handle. And I think that's how most people understand the term in, a, in at least a vague way. I think, but like upon our divergent viewpoints, you dig a little deeper and there's more to it. It's, let's read the word for ergonomics now. It is the study of people's efficiency, people's efficiency in their working environment. What are the three types? Physical, cognitive, and organizational. What does that mean, you yeah. ask? We're getting broader and broader. <laughs> so you can see why it might be difficult to pin down what ergonomics is, mm -hmm. or ergonomic an ergonomic design is, but I think ultimately it, it drives a bit down to how, when, when we're talking about knives, mm -hmm. how does the design of the knife affect how your hand interacts with it. So rather than kind of skip to the end, Seth and I are each gonna kind of argue the cases for our, our differing, our, our divergent trains of thought here. Uh, and for me, comfort is still, I think the top thing I, I think of, mm -hmm. you know, right, wrong, or indifferent when I think of an ergonomic knife. Um, and it's also an area where folders have traditionally suffered uh, versus fixed blades. This knife right here, the Becker BK40, is kind of a, uh, an exception to the rule. It's one of those uh, folders that is quite comfortable because the handle's actually based off the, the fixed blade, the BK16, essentially. You've got swells and contours in the right places. It holds nicely in the hand. Doesn't feel like you're dealing with a lot of hot spots, even with the pocket clip, which that's kind of a, a folding knife bugaboo for, for hand comfort. And this clip being low profile enough and constructed out of wire, even in a, uh, a tip down position, which I think is less comfortable than in a tip, no, tip up position on this knife, even so it's good. But that's where the, the efficiency part of the argument comes in. The more comfortable a knife is, the longer I think you're gonna be able to work with it before your hand gets tired and ultimately you're gonna get more work done, therefore more efficient? Yeah, possibly. I mean, comfort's a big part of it, certainly. Uh... You don't want to work with an uncomfortable knife, so that's going to hamper your efficiency um, completely. You mm -hmm. know, and hand, handle design is so—it's so tricky. It's so hard, um, especially in a folder where you're having to deal with the compromise of the folding mechanism. Yeah, F fixed blade is free form. You're not constrained by that sort of thing. Yeah, and the other big compromise that folders have, to comfort-wise, is the pocket clip. Um, I think the wire pocket clip is about as good a compromise as we've ever seen. Um, and it's because of a, uh, a quality of these clips that a lot of people actually don't like, which is their springiness, mm -hmm. their sort of squishiness. Um, in the hand, that makes them much more comfortable than your traditional flat, bent pocket clip. Or especially some of the big, chunky milled clips nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this one kind of squishes and springs out of the way of of uh, where you're gripping and finds it a nice little comfortable void in your hand. Should say it doesn't feel flimsy, but 
I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's a little squirty. There's a little bit of play. Yeah. A little, 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 little bit of play. It's a feature, not a bug. Because <laughs> it, it, does, it does make it more comfortable. Um, but when people say they don't like wire pocket clips, that's usually, I mm -hmm, think, what mm -hmm. they're referring to. So that's kind of my one salient point. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, the, the comfort leading to the efficiency. And I have some more knives here as examples. But why don't you lay out kind of the, the building blocks of your side of the, uh, of the equation here. Sure. So in addition to the pocket clip, um, which, which is a big, has a big effect on comfort, uh, the other thing, and I pulled out a crambit, not because I think it's the most comfortable knife, but actually so I can kind of illustrate a lot of the ergonomic features that actually can detract from comfort. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm picking on a crambit because uh, it is made to be held in a very specific way and used in a very specific way. And for that, it's perfect. Maybe you could even argue that ergonomically, you know. It's like, like a purpose-built ergonomic design. Yes. In a way. This was built for a uh, uh, kind of work, if you will, that necessitates quick access and holding like this. Um, Wet work. Yeah. So this is a perfect example of ergonomic features that, that might work for one, uh, purpose not working very well on just a general purpose mm -hmm. knife. Mm -hmm. um, one is finger scallops. These three finger scallops here kind of fit my fingers when the finger's in the ring, but if I wanted to use this karambit like a madman, i.e. a normal <laughs> knife, uh, I'm just kind of cramping <laughs> my hand in here and the finger grooves aren't lined up with my fingers at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. um, it's not uncomfortable, but I wouldn't want to hold this hard and push it hard either. In fact, I probably wouldn't even be able to. Mm -hmm. It would start to hurt. Um, the other thing, other than the, the finger ring causing this handle shape back here to be uh, a little strange for the human hand if you ignore the actual ring itself, is the hawkbill blade. I mean, it's such an extreme blade shape that if you aren't trying to initiate a cut with the tip, you're going to have to work around this blade shape mm -hmm. a little bit. It's going to be kind of a challenge to work with. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of putting your fingers in your, in your hand in a place that is designed to utilize the blade one way. And, and it's, to kind of further your point, like any of those alternate things are, it's pushing your hand out of alignment. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, if I, you'd really have to be a madman to try and carry this and use it like a normal utility knife. I've known a few of those. <laughs> They're out there. They're out there. And it, you can do it. I mean, the edge is still sharp. The point's still going to get into whatever you need to do. But as, as with everything, like any folding knife is, a, is an exercise in compromises. And this one would perhaps be one of the ultimate uh, if you were using it for, for that sort of thing. Yeah. So this is a compromise pushed way, way, way into one direction. All these features are purpose built for holding and using this knife a very specific one way. Um, Which is technically ergonomic. Yeah, one could say, one could say. This is designed to make that one task more efficient. Which is why I wanted to put it on the table because it, you know, I think there's an interesting argument mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Not a knife. It's an interesting thing to think about anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a knife that many of us would choose as an ergonomic knife, but when you really kind of take the definitions apart and uh, and start looking at them. If we're <laughs> going to be pedantic, which, you know, why not? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to move this out of the way. <laughs> Let's just be gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> And this is another design that is sort of on the other end of the spectrum. This is the Kaiser Comfort, a uh, Michael Pretsch design. And look at how chunky that knife is. This has been optimized for exactly kind of the same grip you were doing with the uh, BK40 there. Just putting your hand on it, gripping hard. The big squeeze. The big squeeze, exactly. Uh, and it's really comfortable in that, uh, but for the pocket clip, you know, a little compromise there, but it's contoured, it's big, most well, so importantly. It's not even really contoured, it's just like the edges are are rounded over quite effectively, and you've got that big, you know, mass to hold onto as a, with, without the corners jutting into you. Yes, yeah. no corners and a bunch of mass that your, your fingers are going to feel like they have enough to where you're not just gripping an empty hand, you know. So for as usable as this knife is in that grip, I think it also uh, is not exactly what I would consider to be an ergonomic knife. 
because it's so optimized, like the Karambit, for a specific grip mm -hmm. that it gets in its own way a little bit when you try to use it a different way. You know, um, the grips aren't as comfortable, aren't as optimized. They're yeah, they're very comfortable, but they're not. Uh, there's less of them maybe that feel correct. For example, you know, especially with the tip way up here, I wouldn't be, I don't know that I would feel in uh, uh, as much control as some of my other knives, you know, trying to delicately use that tip in a pinch grip, or this is not a fingertip knife, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like it's about to tip out of your hand if you just <laughs> use your fingertips. Yeah, I could see that. You can do it, but it's, it's so it's... big, it wants to be in the meat of your palm, which is yeah. comfortable. And especially helpful, I think this is a, a good, one of those good knife choices for some folks with arthritis out there, mm -hmm. having something very large and mechanical to, or not mechanical, but large to mechanically grip. Yes. Um, there, there's something for that. But for most users, I would agree, absolutely. It's, it's it, a bit much, which is, if that's what you want, there, I mean, this, this is what you want. Like, well, for example, if, if I were out like if I were taking a folding knife camping, which I do, um, plenty of fixed blades along for the ride, of course, too. Um, this wouldn't be a bad wood carving knife. It's gonna work in a lot of those types of grips mm -hmm. and the comfort there would, would be helpful, but you do lose some of the precision as a result. Yeah, just another kind of set of compromises that Kaiser and the, the designer Michael Pretch have done here to give you more performance in one area, you know, necessarily, perhaps, sacrificing it in others. Um, the pocket clip is an interesting choice here too. Um, just the fact that it's there at all, you know, mm -hmm. on a knife that's this big and comfortable, uh, it does seem like a concession to being able to carry it rather than, you know, a part of the knife's name and comfort. I mean, that's, fortunately it's easily removable mm -hmm. and uh, that's gonna come into play uh, a little later here with uh, another knife we're gonna talk about. Uh, dealing with comfort issues. Yeah, yeah. So for me, ergonomics is more than just about comfort. It also has to do with how readily your tool is at hand and how many different things and ways that tools can be used when open. Um, so that kind of includes things like the pocket clip and the deployment method in ergonomics. Um, Again, that's another area where it, this makes some sacrifices. It's another area where your hand is interfacing with the knife, with the thing, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Front flippers are, th this works great, especially if you kind of want to use it slow, or if you're an expert, you can front flick it, but I, I don't know that this is... Um, the most ergonomic opening method. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think <laughs> it's a little awkward for a lot of people. Um, so, another compromise. To that, this is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. And this design is much less comfortable, in fact, probably than a lot of knives on this table. The handle has kind of a strange kink in it. It works, but it's not the best for just gripping. And this is pushed entirely towards a different type of cutting task, which is, as you might guess from the name, cutting on a cutting board, like a chef's knife. And I love the compromises they've made to do that. One, because that's a type of cut I do a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something I'm willing to, uh, or even sometimes looking for in a pocket knife. And it is still really usable in those other ways. It's easy to deploy, nice springy wire pocket clip, doesn't make it uncomfortable. Uh, I'd say the frame makes it a little more uncomfortable than the pocket clip does for the the big squeeze, so to speak. Yeah, you've got all these gaps here your skin's gonna fall into. And I say this as a fan of the Spidey Chef. I, I happen to own and have carried one extensively, but, you know, things are what they are, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of being optimized, that grip right here, and it's, if you're not familiar with the knife, you haven't used it, it's less about a rock chop. To me, this knife is all about pull cutting and slicing Yeah, with that knuckle clearance that you have right there. And it does that exceptionally well. The top of that curve hugs into the palm when you're doing that pinch grip. You've mm -hmm. got a subtle thumb scallop, but it's there. All enabling that uh, an, an ergonomic grip perhaps on that task. Yeah, I think so. And, and a kitchen knife is not all that 
different from lots of other fixed blades we might be familiar with. You know, a hunting knife, not that different from a small kitchen knife when well, it comes to a paring knife and a burden trout or could, could sometimes almost be interchangeable. Yeah, so I find that this design is legitimately good at other kinds of cutting too, you know. It feels just as deft on the cutting board as it does cutting down a cardboard box. There are a lot more concessions to being a standard pocket knife than that Kaiser Comfort. Thin scales, titanium frame, uh, all cool stuff, but not necessarily great for comfort, I would say. Mm -hmm. Still, there the concessions made here, uh, I think, really work. It's still a pocket knife first, but it's just one that happens to work on a cutting board, and that's pretty cool. So so far, you've only had like one comfortable knife. Yeah, the comfort. Uh -huh. But is that an ergonomic design? Yeah, it's 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 an interesting thought experiment. All right, I so see you got a really tiny knife here. Yes, I wanted to pull a tiny knife because I knew you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, apart from your hand size, it's also just that this is no one's first thought of a comfortable knife. Well, I think we are about to have an argument, like you said <laughs> at the beginning. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the Giant Mouse Nibbler. The Giant Mouse Nibbler, yes, thank you. Um, this one has titanium and 20 CV, and uh, it also comes with N690 and aluminum for, geez, I think under 100 bucks? Decent, yeah. Yeah. You also get Micarta and 20 CV. Oh, nice. Anyway. This is a legitimately small knife. This is like almost as small as the Spyderco Ladybug. It's smaller than the Spyderco Dragonfly. It's smaller than the Baby Banter. This is a really small knife. Um, it's small enough I could see it hanging from somebody's keychain even. But it's a legitimate pocket knife that just so happens to be small mm. because of the way it's designed and because of its ergonomics. Like that Spidey Chef, the blade shape has been optimized for its purpose, which I think is general kind of utility. You know, with a blade this size, uh, you're not gonna be doing food prep with it. But, so the point is low. You're not gonna have to be, um, you don't want a lot of belly, at least I don't want a lot of belly on a knife like this. It kind of slips around, feels uncontrollable. And, we have a in, uninterrupted curve from the handle that goes out onto the blade. And that kind of maximizes the area that you can grab onto. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got gee, like a two and a half finger grip here. It still feels very secure in my hand. I still feel like I have tons of possible power. You know, it's wide given enough. Given its size. Yeah. Given its size, yeah. 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 It's wide enough and, and kind of massive enough back here that it still gives your hand something to hold on it's, to, especially it's with the enough. lanyard. Yeah, yeah. It's enough. It's just enough, and it's still a really, really tiny size that you could stash just about anywhere. One of the things that I like about this knife, speaking of you know how your hand interfaces with it, your, the ergonomics is this little upswept back right here, which I've used this kind of feature in some of my designs before because it allows for this one type of manipulation that I was surprised, even on a knife this small, it works, and that's your pinky. Hmm. I find it very natural in a pinch grip here to put my pinky on that little upturned kick, and you can then use that finger to mm. manipulate the blade. You know, point at different places, you're getting a lot of fine control from your pinky Mm -hmm. because of that one little ergonomic detail right there. And look how stable that tip is while you make that movement too. That's part of why it's nice that it's so low. Mm -hmm. You know, as an example, imagine a trailing point on that. You'd be, yeah. It'd, it'd be, be flying around. You know, just for example, it'd be. Right. Well, like, in this case, it almost looks like the belly's flying around. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. That's but a that, fingertip knife for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But with enough, with just enough there that you can still kind of manhandle it a little bit. And that's what makes it, I think, a really, really ergonomic pick. Surprisingly ergonomic. Mm -hmm. Just efficient in lots of kinds of cuts. Would you go so far as to say it's probably, it's one of, if not the most ergonomic small knives out there? I would say that. Yeah, I think it's up there with the, the knives I mentioned earlier, the, the Ladybug, Dragonfly, um, Baby Banter. Yeah. Very nice. So we are doing a service to our, our, our topic today then. 
<laughs> um, well, where, where should we go from here? So you've got, I feel like you've kind of laid out, you've had examples, but you're also kind of like building a case for the knives you're gonna have next. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> we'll see, um, my definition of ergonomic was so much more esoteric. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as is your haircut, <laughs> you know, let's be honest. <laughs> well, um, well, what, why, don't, why don't we keep going with you guys, with, with the last few of yours. Okay. Um, throw, throw over to me at any point you wish. Okay. I'll, let's just do the stretch too, because this was where my mind first went. Uh, I think this is one of the most ergonomic knives ever. Uh, Which made my eyes go, what? Yeah, that was the start of our disagreement. <laughs> our divergent viewpoints. Mm, yes. <laughs> So uh, tell me why. Tell tell them why. Well, it may not be <laughs> defend yourself. <laughs> it may not be thick and contoured. In fact, it's pretty thin, but it's it's got a bunch of things going for it. One, it's big enough that you can still stretch out on it, which yeah, spider go stretch <laughs> is really that's a big comfort factor for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about pure comfort, having a knife that that especially when you're really trying to bear down into something, you can stretch that thumb out, get it almost flat against the handle there. You can, ah, you can just crank on it and it feels good. It feels accommodating. It's got a finger choil, which on this design I think is implemented particularly well because not only does it kind of facilitate different grips, you can get up closer here. When you're trying to apply force but still have it in control, it's nice to be really close to the edge. Agreed. So that accommodates that. But this little scoop here on the finger choil is a little lower than some other spider codes, and that makes it really easy to just put a fingertip there and pull out mm -hmm. of something. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, something I do all the time and didn't realize how much I would miss that feature when I when go you don't to have it. Yeah. When I don't have it, yeah. Something you're not gonna get on a Kaiser. Yeah. Imagine getting that stuck in a tree or I don't know, something trying to yank it out with nothing to grab onto other than the mass of it. Why are you attacking trees with that knife? <laughs> they're, they're felled. They've been felled already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this has just enough little hook. It's not a sub hilt or anything, but it's just well, enough. With, with so many of Spyderco's designs, there's all kinds of, you know, manipulation points to, you know, not the same shape as on the uh, giant mouse we had just looked at, but Pretty much everything on it is designed to be able to be used in some way or another. Even mm -hmm. the, the beak here on the back, which is subtle enough that it doesn't cramp your hand really, but it also gives you more to manipulate. That also works for that, mm -hmm. you know, that pinky finger thing. A little bit less so due to the size of the knife, but it's there. Yeah. Just so, so many things are designed to facilitate work. Mm -hmm. And none of these curves on the handle here are really exaggerated enough to force your hand into one into just one position, uh, which I think is a, a big feature of a very ergonomic knife. You know, whether you're holding it like this or choked back, kind of squeezed up into it, it it doesn't feel wrong. Uh, that's a that's really hard to pull off. Mm -hmm. um, but these gentle curves help, and the fact that it's a back lock. There's no big voids back here, and the whole back of the handle True. is filled in. True. Also, kind of helps with the comfort. And One feeling accommodated. Mm -hmm. Or two fewer pinch points, I guess. I right. Say. So, yeah, that's my case. This, this I think, is uh, king of ergonomics for me. Wow. Helped by the size very much, but... Discuss down below. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have next? Uh, actually, I'm speaking of king, it... king of ergonomics. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's move a few over here. Let's... Because this is, like I said, this is where our viewpoints diverged. Because while I agree, this, there are... After you know, looking into what ergonomics is a little yeah. bit, there is a lot ergonomically to love about this, but I don't particularly find this knife extremely comfortable. Um, I don't own an XL, but I do own a Stretch, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it. I, I think it's an excellent knife, but it's with with a folder. I'm always I always know I'm going to be giving up some comfort, mm -hmm. and and this one. So if I'm thinking of an ergonomic or a comfortable knife, which I still have a hard time separating the two, and I'm sure a lot of you folks are like that too. It, it made my eyes pop. Like this, this is not a comfortable <laughs> knife to me, uh -huh. even if it is a knife I enjoy and would happily carry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so some of the, I've, I've got a few here, some are like all time comfortable greats in the, the folding knife world. And one of them is the Buck Vantage. Uh, specifically, they, they have made some of these versions over the years where it was more flat handled, flat uh, slab sided. But the uh, currently only two, uh, a small and large available in this configuration, there is a nice ergonomic shape to the handle. It's contoured, but it's not just a simple rounded over contour, which can work depending mm -hmm. on the design. But there's, it's more complex. There's a little more to it here. And it's a fantastic design. I wish it flipped a little bit better. You have to, it's not as easy as some of the, uh, well, the next knife we're gonna look at, for mm -hmm. example, which has kind of held it back, I think, a little bit. Yeah. It's uh, like a first generation. Last few years, flipper. especially, yeah. yeah. But it's such an elegant design. The comfort in the big squeeze is great. The pocket clip sits out of the way. I don't, like, I feel that it's there, but it doesn't bite me at all. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's, I, this is also uh, it's what established the tail-mounted deep carry pocket clip is one of my favorites of all time because look how elegant that is. And it, it works well for the manipulation like that. It works well in a pinch grip I've found, I have found. Maybe a less so in a reverse grip because I was trying that out as we were talking earlier mm -hmm. and it's definitely less optimized for that. But in pretty much everything else, even the, uh, the liner lock here, which is proud on both sides, doesn't truly get in the way for me. It all just works on a yep. very comfortable level, and I find that knife very easy to manipulate. Oh yeah, I'm I'm with you for sure. This is this is a supremely comfortable knife. Um, it's crazy how much that pocket clip disappears. It's like it's like it's not even there. Like I can just feel like the tip of it, uh, big squeeze. But it doesn't squeeze in on the big squeeze. Like mm -hmm. it's just. You're aware of it, but you're not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really beautifully done. And the fact that it works for like that for my hand size and for yours says something. Yeah. This is where I really understood what you were meaning by ergonomics. You handed me this knife as one of your picks, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So I think that one is, is definitely belongs on the list of if not the most ergonomic folders out there, definitely the most comfortable folders out there, but I'd make the argument for both. Mm -hmm. um, another one that has really stood out to me over the years is the Best Tech Arctic. Pretty recent design, affordable design. It's like 52 bucks nowadays for a D2 ball bearing flipper with G10. And this is an example where, unlike the Buck or the uh, another knife we're gonna look at here towards the end, this is just rounded over. There's not a lot of complex contouring or, or sophisticated contouring, I should say, going mm -hmm. on. It's, you know, they had a flat, they rounded it over, they added a little, uh, you know, thumb scallop or a fingertip scallop right here. Mm -hmm. But I'll be darned if this handle shape doesn't just plain work for that. Again, the pocket clip stays mostly out of the way for me. It feels comfortable, not quite as comfortable. I'd probably say this is the least comfortable of, of my picks up here right now, but it's still up there for an affordable option. And to the manipulation aspect, these three finger holes right here actually work for me as more than just an aesthetic or lightening thing because my fingertips land perfectly hmm. along those three, which allows me another grip, essentially. It allows manipulation, you know, twisting that knife around like so. Also works well in some kind of extended pinch grips. If you're doing something like this, mm, it, it mm -hmm. gives you something right there, which I thought I think is always pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the pocket clip that gets in the way of the comfort with this one. Maybe Just with a, a wire yeah. clip, mm -hmm. I think that would really kick up the comfort because I'm definitely feeling that space that my hand kind of uh, squishing around it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm getting a little pinched, but the, the shape of the hand, that's just how it goes with folding. It, I mean, it that's is. the compromise yeah, you have to That's the hard thing. Like, not everyone can pull it off the way this, this Vantage does. No, no. Unfortunately. Flip that knife though, like, how good is that? Yeah. Like the pro proliferation Ooh. of like the, the $50 range D2 ball bearing flippers these last, what, three, four years? Come on, absolutely fantastic for the knife industry, for knife people. Yeah, that handle, the rounding is is more than enough. The shape is great, but the rounding and the thickness, you know, these aren't yeah, thin scales to is, start out with. Yeah, compare that to, uh, you know, the Spidey Chef you had earlier there. It's definitely a different tack has been mm -hmm. taken. Definitely. Um, 
speaking of pocket clips, this is another interesting one. And this is one where I've had these two knives in my head for a while, but I don't know if I've ever had them both hand, you know, side by side in yeah. hand. And the first is the Cold Steel 8010. I think this is a very, very, very comfortable knife. And it works quite well, but I think the older design, the Ultimate Hunter, is both more comfortable and more ergonomic mm -hmm. by, by your side of the definition than the AD-10 is. A couple reasons. One, the AD-10, it's an excellent knife. Don't get me wrong. Please do not get me wrong. It is an excellent knife. The G-10 feels great. The contouring on it, or the in this case, it's most, mostly just a round over, feels fantastic. But because of the width, it's a little less manipulatable, mm -hmm. I would say, in some more, in, in some areas where the Ultimate Hunter is. And also the pocket clip. The wide flat clip here is a, is a good compromise to kind of help it be a little more comfortable. But for me, I do feel it on the big squeeze right there a little bit, just this top edge, mm -hmm. not the end, just the top edge here. I can feel that. And in fact, I've, I've recommended on video before that this would be an even more comfortable knife if you were to remove that clip. Yeah. Carry it on a, a belt pouch. Probably if easier were, to carry too. You know, especially like if I were carrying this knife outdoors, like if I were taking this camping or hiking, I would take the clip off and throw it in a belt pouch because it'd be more comfortable for me. Yeah, same. And I own one too. You do, you, mm -hmm. in fact you do. The Ultimate Hunter, however, feels better in the squeeze grip. It is more manipulatable in a lot of excess grips, shall mm -hmm. we say. And the pocket clip, I feel it less when I when I squeeze on that knife. And and one more thing, the uh, the tail end of it here is a little more open than on the AD10. There we go. Hold it that way. So it it gets out of its own way a little bit more. It's it's just more versatile, I think. Yeah. You know what? I came in here uh, ready to defend the AD10 mm -hmm. because it is the knife out of these two that I own. But I have to admit, you're right. It's more comfortable and it's more ergonomic. Um, I like what you said about it getting out of its own way a little more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because as, as nice as this handle is, this beak here at the back can kind of limit the ways that you can hold it. You know, you can't really bury that end in your palm because mm -hmm. it's a little, it's a little pokey right yeah. there. It's the same point you made about the, uh, the stretch mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Like, there are, it's less prescriptive in how you hold it than the yes, 8010 is. Definitely. It's big enough that you can work around it. I mean, I, I use mine in all different kinds of groups yeah. all the time, but this just allows for a wider range and... And you're dealing with the same steel, mm -hmm. the same lock, the same materials, blade length, a little, little bit less, but not a huge amount and more affordable. The question is, if it's more comfortable and more ergonomic, why did I buy the 8010? I can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, because again, like I have said, you know, I'm on record and still stand behind saying the 8010 is an excellent knife. Mm -hmm. And we're splitting hairs here. This is not by any means, uh, a, you know, us trying to like drag the 8010 down. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a subtle, subtler difference than it might come across as, but it is a definite difference nonetheless. Great knife, kind of underrated, I think. I agree, I agree, I think it's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna save my last one for, for the very end. Okay. Um, which, you know, you people can see it, you know what it is, but let's, let's, let's go to yours. Here. Sure. <laughs> uh, my next two are both kind of compromises uh, that I think do a good job of balancing comfort, ergonomics, and just carryability. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I feel like ergonomics is part of every every one of those every things. Every single thing, yeah, yeah. But um, this is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. Uh, nice little flipper design here. This has some of the features, like on that stretch, a forward finger choil that is actually pretty generously sized as far as non Spyderco finger choils go, <laughs> so that you can actually get a uh, fistful of finger up there instead of just a fingertip, um, at least for me. See, we'll see how large my fingers yeah. are in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, little a little close. bit up there on the, I'm getting a little kissed by the back edge just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But a, such a manipulatable little knife. 
I mean, I'm, I'm automatically I'm doing that pinky thing right there. Yeah, pinch grip works really well for that knife. The flipper tab's not too big, so it doesn't get in its own way. Uh, I gotta say, the big squeeze, it's leaving me wanting, though. Like that this. is not comfortable on the same level of <laughs> any of those picks. It really isn't. It's down to its thinness, you know? It helps it carry a little nicer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, tucks into the corner of a pocket really nice, comes out smooth deploys easily in a bunch of different ways. This fuller is pretty crisp, so you can use it like a uh, thumb hole or flick it open. Um, I'm glad you're the one doing that and not me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say though, I, I think if you were, the only thing that would have made me more apoplectic than you picking the stretch two mm -hmm. as your most ergonomic is if you had said that knife first off. I probably would have bursted blood vessel. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, the fact Great that knife. This, yeah, the fact that, that this this choil doesn't have any guard from the edge uh, limits it in certain ways. But the size of the knife too limits it in certain ways. Mm. I don't think you're gonna be. Doing but I, I don't know that that. Well, it is an ergonomic issue if you can feel it, like my finger hand, finger size can. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was about to about to disagree with you, but I agree with you instead. <laughs> Great blade shape on this one too. Nice continuous belly, but it's not so big. It's, it feels slippery. Mm -hmm. You can. Still, the way this handle is designed, you can get lots of it on a cutting board, more than half. Jeez, almost the whole thing. Yeah, great little design. Uh, takes a lot of ergonomic features that work and just puts it on a pocket knife design that's really easy to carry. And even simpler with fewer features <laughs> is the Wii Banter. This is a Knife Center exclusive with 20 CV steel. No finger choil here to speak of, no flipper, just a thumb stud and a handle and a spear point blade. But man, if that handle shape does not work great. And it works great for just about everybody I've handed it mm -hmm. to also. What really makes this handle shape work is how close you can get to the edge, I think. A lot of handles have either some sort of finger choil, uh, you know, uh, design feature around the pivot that lets you get up onto the blade or a big, dramatic guard that keeps you away from the blade. This is... Perfect right, example of both uh -huh. things right there. This is just a handle that ends right behind the blade. And so it just feels natural to get up really close behind there and have just as much control as you would on stretch or the stinger here. Yeah, with more protection in a way. With more mm -hmm. protection because you can still very kind of palpably feel where that handle ends and it gives you a sense of confidence that really belies how small this knife is. I agree. It's This is a knife that belongs on like that list of small but mighty. It's a three inch blade, but it grips like it could be a bigger knife. Yes. And it has a handle which I have in my mind described as oddly comfortable. <laughs> I think it's fair. It looks very, very square. It doesn't look like it would be as comfortable as it is mm -hmm. without contouring. And, and it genuinely does. I'm not even messing around with that statement. I think it, you know, there's not a ton of hot spots there. Not, not as many as I would have ever expected before I held it. It has a little cut right there. Mm -hmm. It does that manipulation thing I enjoy so much with that pinky finger. And yeah, pinch grips. The, the advantage of a flatter handle like that is it is a type of thing that gets out of its own way to you know bring back a point we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. And still very easy to carry too. Nice deep carry pocket clip. That again, I can't even, I'm not holding it right now, but I don't remember feeling the pocket clip a second ago when, when doing the grip. Yeah, it's not bad. It, it doesn't announce itself. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's nothing like the buck. And uh, I still think a spring clip I just like the way they squish. <laughs> I wish you'd stop saying squish. That's <laughs> such like a negative connotation. But. All right. Let's get over the stigmas. <laughs> spring clips are meant to be springy. <laughs> Springiness sounds better. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I agree with you. And it's, it. of all the knives on the table, like I, I wouldn't have been as mad at you as you if you had said that instead <laughs> uh -huh. of the stretch. I still would have been, had a moment, but it is probably... As far as flat handled knives go, it's probably the most comfortable flat handled folder I can think of at the moment. Wow. Um, I don't think I can think of another one, so I guess I might have to agree with you. Maybe we'll have to explore that a little later in a knife AQ or something, but uh, that's 
that would be one of the first things that came to mind for me mm -hmm. for that type of that, that narrow, you know, definition I just laid out there. Cool. Yeah, nicely done. Well, we each have two knives left and we kind of talked about this before we started filming because we think these both of these two knives do a really good job of combining my side of the argument and your side of the argument right. very well. I think the Ultimate Hunter does a good job of that too. Yeah, I agree with you. But we can't end on three knives, so. Right, we're only two. Um, yeah, unless, uh, maybe Thomas wants to pick one. No one wants to hear from Thomas. <laughs> no, so that's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we do yours first or should we do mine first? Let's do yours. Just for, okay. The classic. The, you know, what list of most ergonomic knives whether you're talking about ergonomics from Seth's point of view or from the comfort side of view, the right side, no, no. <laughs> what kind of list would this be without the Griptilian? And it's right there in the name Griptilian. Mm -hmm. It is comfortable, first off. And that comfort is because of one of the advantages that you can only really get on knives that are more attainably priced with an injection molded handle. It is far more complex than just a simply simply rounded over handle. Mm -hmm. There are tons of different planes going on. And one, the time to program something like that would take a little bit longer. And the milling time to do more complex shapes like that would nominally take a little bit longer yeah. as well. And most companies, whether they could or not, they just tend to not do that sort of thing. And as such, I mean, Mel Pardu was a genius with this handle design. And it's, it's not a term I say very often, and I truly believe that's the case with this handle shape. It holds- It looks so simple too. But that's, that's therein the trick. lies its mm -hmm. beauty. Cause you know, there's a neutralness to the overall profile, but everything else going on helps it work in literally any grip I have ever even conceived of being able to throw at this knife. It mm -hmm. just, gets out of its own way in the best way possible. It works for any hand size out there. I mean, even if you're Andre the Giant, you can only get a finger, two and a half fingers on this knife. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna work because of the way it yeah. is shaped. Yeah. Yeah, no disagreement for me. This is a legendary design for comfort, for usability. Uh, the access lock, we're talking, if we wanna broaden the ergonomic discussion to how that interfaces with your hand, it's beautiful. You know, very safe. You don't have to get your fingers in the way. You can pull it out of your pocket with your fingertip already on mm -hmm. this, You're ready to go. Um, Make your cut, close it right away. Very efficient. It's, it's got a fluidity of motion when you're used to that type of mechanism that I just, I still haven't seen equaled, which is why I, I gravitate towards this lock style so much for my per, a lot of my personal carries. Mm -hmm. You know, even with some newer stuff like Demco's Shark Lock, which is phenomenal, doesn't quite, maybe it's because I'm so used to the Axis Lock, but I, I feel the Axis Lock has it a little bit more. And, and other people who are doing crossbar locks as well, it's got that gracefulness, the mm -hmm. fluidity of motion and efficiency of movement. It was a very natural fit. This is an aside, but I've always thought this. It was a very natural fit for Benchmade to come out with the Axis Lock. Cause like in a way, moving from Balisong knives to Axis Lock knives, mm. there's totally a crossover there. I can see that, very interesting. Being able to just flip it open and flip it closed. That was very cool way. looking, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree, I agree. And this knife right here, Knife Center Exclusive, should be mentioned with 20 CVs, only like 150 bucks. It's pretty sweet. So. You know, I mentioned like the injection molding. Uh, granted, Benchmades aren't the uh, the least expensive knives out there anymore, uh, even amongst the American competition. I, I'm not gonna sit here and, and make that argument, but you see this on, or you see this benefit on a lot of more inexpensive knives nowadays too. Like the CRKT shenanigan comes to mind, where you get to have like a really complex handle shape yeah. that would otherwise be uh, more expensive to do. Well, and then one of the other things that you mentioned uh, earlier, which um, I, had slipped my mind too when I was thinking about these things is that closed back on this knife too. Yeah. I'm really admiring the complexity of the contouring here. It's it's really everywhere. I mean, yeah. the, from this silhouette, it's a dead simple handle shape, but as you turn it around in 3D space, like, you know, it tapers just, just mm -hmm. slightly here and towards the end and swells a little bit in the middle and the back is a little wider than the you know, the finger side, it's just 
It's so nicely and done. That's something that's always attracted me to handmade fixed blades is when you've got a guy on the grinder with his, his files or whatever he's doing, it's it's a feel thing. It's this needs to come away here. This is here. It's not just programming a, a circle in a computer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that takes hands-on touch as as it's going. And that for a folder has it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this one does too. It doesn't quite have the complexity of shape to the handle as the Cryptilian does. And it's not built in quite such a beautifully simple way with a closed back. But in hand, it has comfort and ergonomics both. Um, I 100% agree with you as well. You know, it accommodates all the different grips you'd want to do. Plenty of handle size to stretch out on. You know, you could really flatten out that thumb and still not even really be very far off the jimping there. What's the name of this knife? Oh, this is the SOG Aegis AT. Yeah. No, I 100% I agree with you. It's got the length, it's got the comfort, it's got the manipulatability. Mm -hmm. Even that little thing sticking out on the end, I was always, from pictures and everything, the first time seeing these, I'm like, that's gonna get in the way. Mm -hmm. But it really doesn't. I mean, my fingers don't even reach it, and even if I'm choking back, it still doesn't feel like it's pushing me out. Yeah. And it's a nice place to have a lanyard that's not gonna give you a bunch of extra bulk up at the uh, top of the handle mm -hmm. where you don't need it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather have it kind of hanging out the end here, coming out the, the bottom of my hand. Yeah, really nicely thought out design for sure. And you know, you still do get some nice kind of chamfers here, a little broader here towards the fingertips. Mm -hmm. So it, it gives you that contoured feel. I think I'm even detecting a little bit of swell towards the center, just, I think, just a touch. I, I'm never sure, because I've, I've had this internal conversation a little bit. Actually, yeah, no, I think it is. I think so. But I, th I think it's less, it's almost less about swell, more like it's been shaved down towards mm. the front, which helps a pinch a little bit better. But I guess you, you would still define that as a swell. But <laughs> Spl really splitting hairs here now with, with that. But yeah, yeah no, I, I agree, it's it's definitely there. Uh, and like the, like the Griptilian, it's kind of complexity doesn't come through from pictures alone. Agreed, agreed. Cool, well, that's what we've got to show you right now. Let us know what you thought. Uh, you know, we thought this was just a fun topic as we were diverging our opinions on it. So we thought it was fun. We, would be fun to bring it to you folks as well. Let us know your favorite ergonomic knife designs, fixed or folding. Let us know your favorite comfortable knife designs and which ones you think meld the two quite well. If you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, there are gonna be links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives today, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I'm Seth V. He's Seth V, and we're signing off. See you next time.